Let's settle for the details. Now, illegal miners have invaded the Pataho and Trabwon forests at Dompin in the western region. But the chief of the area says he is helpless against the continuous destruction of the environment. Major streams that join the river Bonsa have been highly polluted. When Love News confronted the mi miners, they indicated they will continue to engage in the illegal activity and the absence of jobs. Here are some excerpts of our second part of our hotline documentary, Destru Destruction for Gold by Erastus Asaridonko. So very active mining going on within the Pataon forest, uh, close to Dumpim in the western region. The river Nui has been blocked in two and you can see the miners over there actively mining this resource. Is this legal? Uh, it's illegal. But you're doing it anyway? Uh, because of uh, we don't have anything to do as our permanent job, that's why we are doing it. Because this very engine that we are using used to cause a harm to a lot of people. Uh, a time ago, it caused a harm to a lot of people. But because of we not getting anything doing as our job, that's why we are still doing this. Here, we find a number of excavators clearing the riverbed in the middle of a large pool of residue and devastated forest cover. The people here will not tolerate our visit nor speak to us. But we are told that this irresponsible mining activity is sanctioned by a number of powerful people. The River Nguyen is no longer identifiable from the pits that fill this valley. These muddy looking men and women represent unemployment, the struggles of youth and the determination to do anything to survive, including participating in this illegal gold mining activity here. There are no jobs in town. If you don't give us jobs, Galamse is what we will continue to do. That has been a very big major problem for me. A worried chief of Dumpim, Nana Nyua Penin IV, says he's helpless in the face of rising illegal mining in the area. It is very, very serious. All the river bodies in the various places we are talking of, there were rivers that we could fetch and then drink those days. But for now, you saw some yourself. It is very bad. Before you get there, then they've bolted away and you'll not see them again. The next time you see them, you hear that they are at the Trebon Forest. You dispatch men to that place, you go and then they are not there. So they are, it is very hard to monitor their activities. The River Nguyen and other highly polluted rivers and streams at Dumpim link other water bodies like the Bunsa, close to Takwa in the western region. Some excerpts of the second part of the hotline documentary Destruction for Gold. It is tonight on the Joy News Channel, DSTV 41 and GoTV Channel 144 at 8.30 p.m. on this channel. Meanwhile, the Office of the Special Prosecutor says it has begun investigations into suspected corruption and corruption-related offences in illegal small-scale mining. This was contained in publication on its official website, and let's go to that website to read full details of the publication. Now, it reads, the Office of the Special Prosecutor has commenced an investigation into suspected corruption and corruption-related offences in respect of illegal small-scale mining. The investigation targets some officials of the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources and the Forestry Commission. It also targets the activities and expenditure of the dissolved Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, especially in respect of the uh, seizure and management of excavators, machinery, road vehicles and gold nuggets. Now, the... Um, Investigation includes the active and ongoing inquiry into allegations of use of public office for profit against Charles Bussieu during his tenure as security secretary, I beg your pardon, of the Interministerial Committee 
of illegal mining arising from an investigative documentary titled Galam Safe Fraud Part 1, published by Tiger IPI. The investigation further targets the activities of Aconto or Conta, Mining Limited, and other companies. Nationals of foreign countries allegedly involved in illegal mining and allegations of corruption and corruption related offenses against some municipal and district chief executives and political party officials. Let's do other stories now because the World Health Organization says Africa has the highest rates of people dying from suicide in the world. In a statement, the organization said Africa is home to six of the ten countries with the highest suicide rates globally. The continent is said to have one psychiatrist for every 500,000 inhabitants, and that's 100 times less than the WHO recommendation. Around 11 people per 100,000 per year die by suicide in the African region, higher than the global average of nine per 100,000 people. Now, that's according to the WHO Mental health problems account for up to 11% of the risk factors associated with suicide, it continues. So what is Ghana's case in terms of people's uh, mental disorders? Our research desk have put together the breakdown of Ghana's case. Now, 10% of Ghana's population has one form of mental disorder or the other. 41% have psychological distress. Uh, mild, moderate, and severe. 16,000 persons with severe mental illness. And we know that this 16,000, this number, uh, those are the people on the streets. Um, so the cost to the country, so mental health is... Um, so 7% of the GDP, which is 5.5 billion US dollars, is what Ghana is losing because of mental health issues. Mental health care delivery facilities, we have three uh, psychiatric hospital, we have four regional hospitals, and teaching hospitals and district hospitals, those figures are not available to us. Mental health care delivery workforces, now the specialists, we have 39 psychiatrists. That is 39 psychiatrists trying to uh, deal with the whole country. We have 244 psychologists. We have 362 mental health social workers, mental health nurses, 2,463, and occupational therapists. We only have six. And most of these workers are concentrated in the southern part of Ghana. So you can imagine, you go to the north, or there are people in the north who, you know, are suffering from like some sort of like mental disorder, and they're trying to get access to these um, workers. Unfortunately, they can't, because most of these workers or these specialists are in the southern region of the country. But Humphrey Kofi, who's executive secretary of the Mental Health Society of Ghana, says Ghana needs a holistic solution to the problems. He spoke to my colleague Samuel Kojobrace on Newsdesk. Having some mass exodus of psychiatric nurses leaving the country for greener pastures, if you go to the psychiatric hospital, the three main psychiatric hospitals, you realize that there are a greater number of these nurses who are leaving. Um, for, the for the psychologists, we don't even have to talk about it because the numbers, even though from the research, look quite higher than the psychiatrist, it's still, not inadequ it's still inadequate in relation to the ratio of uh, the population we have. So the situation is even not getting better. You ask yourself, what is the motivation for these people who are leaving? What exactly is motivating them to go? And the bottom line is about the, their salaries, it's about how they are being catered for, it's about how the risk involved in the area of health is also being managed. Because if you are dealing with people with mental health disorders and you are in a psychiatric facility, um, you stand some risk of being, I mean, some higher risk than other conditions that you'll be taking care of. So how is this risk being managed and what is it that somebody can benefit from should there be 
any situation where the person is being is hurt by somebody who is under such uh, uh, the Sakari hospitals are in the southern part of Ghana. Talk about Pantan, talk about Accra Sakari hospitals, talk about um, Ankafu. In the middle belt, in the Ashanti region and Brown Hapu, and also in the northern region, there are no psychiatric hospitals. Much as we are talking about community care and emphasizing on community support rather than institutionalization, it is so important that we have some of these psychiatric hospitals where at least there will be some short stay for people who are in some of these uh, situations so that at least they are monitored and they are taken care of. So it's not like um, keeping people in the psychiatric hospital though we are trying to decongest, but to ensure that people have access to mental health care at least to the closest minimum distance that they can run. So we will equally need a psychiatric hospital in Ashanti or Brown House that will serve Ashanti and Brown Hapo. And then we need also one in the in the northern region to serve the, the population over there. Because when the situation is dire, they are moved all the way from the north, from the Ashanti to Brown Hapo, to the to the to the uh, southern belt, which is Accra, Pantine and then Ankapo. These things have to be resolved. Also we need to ensure that at least every chip compound, every chip compound, which is the barest um, level of um, health support, has mental health services. At least the primary mental health services is available for people who can access it at their closed door rather than traveling. And when the situation gets, I mean, dire, that, that will require their traveling. That's okay. But at least to the barest minimum of their residents, there should be some support in terms of mental health services. Away from that, the Bonner Regional Office of the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission has replaced about 38 rotten electricity poles, which were posing threats to residents of Salam Krom, a farming community in the Kronza South Municipality. Regional man Manager of the PRC, Patrick Entry, emphasized that the Commission will continue to monitor existing poles in the region and ensure that NETCO deals with the danger posed. Anna Sabit reports. A predominantly farming community in the Nkranza South municipality of the Bono East region. This comes after members of the community reported the risk posed by the poles to the Regional Office of the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission. Edward True is a former assemblyman for the community. Diana, the Covier office, or my uncle Corano, my comrade, and nineteen times. Penny for so I befess a chap, who's no a broom pimby bree, but none nestle, Yamiadum, etimi Abbas Amaya. We now manager of the PURC Patrick Entry, whose timely intervention led to the replacement of the polls, noted that the commission would continue to monitor existing polls in its operational area to ensure that such issues are resolved. Most of the time, these are some of the things that um, makes us happy as a commission to see communities who have had issues like this for a very long time and having their issues resolved. Um, we do this just to make sure that the right quality of service is being experienced by all our consumers. However, we always make sure that we monitor all jobs that are done by the utilities so that no job is done in a way that uh, consumers are shortchanged. He further urged community members to ensure that materials used by shape contractors are standard to avoid the issue of replacing them a few years after the project implementation. We are educating all communities that are under the shape project to also monitor and make sure that the right materials are being used by contractors. In any case, when there's a project going on in their area, they should quickly alert VRA so that they can also come in and also come and inspect the materials that are being used. The Chiman Area Manager for Netco, John Tahiri, on his part, acknowledged the efforts made by the PURC and noted that Netco remained committed to satisfying its cherished customers. You can see the happiness among the people, and that is what Netco stands for. We are representing the customer, we supply the customer needs, we 
we, we have purpose to satisfy our customers. And that is what we, 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 we have come here to, to demonstrate. However, charge policy makers to ensure that materials used in the extension of electricity is of standard quality. I think our procurement processes must ensure quality. And whoever is in charge of procuring electricity materials, pools, cables or conductors, whatever is required in the connection of power to the people, I think they should ensure quality. Because um, these substandard materials create emergencies for us and it is not good for our operations. Reporting for Joy News, Anas Sabit, Salam Krum. Vice Chairman of the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, Nasir Alpha Mohammed, um, Ghana would have done better with the negotiations of our, says Ghana would have done better with negotiations of our petroleum bases, uh, basins. Speaking on the AM show on the semi-annual report 2022, Nasir Alpha Mohammed said until now Ghana did not have any opportunity for renegotiations any time agreements had become amicable to her interest. All the fields that we are, uh, uh, we are currently getting production from now, these were fields, um, the petroleum agreements of which were negotiated earlier in time, at a time when the petroleum basins of Ghana were relatively risky. And so we needed investment from the international investment, uh, you know, uh, from the international investors to come into Ghana to be able to invest in the oil and gas industry. And if we know, the oil and gas industry is capital intensive in nature. And so when they come, they tend to negotiate for uh, opportunities um, uh, like uh, tax concessions and all of that to make up for the investment losses they may have in case they hit dry oils. And so in the early stages, we actually gave a lot of fiscal concessions to these um, oil companies. And the uh, Petroleum agreements are always long-term in nature, 25 years, 30 years, and all of that. And so once they get this, in addition to the stabilization clause that they negotiate for, and in those days it was freezing stabilization clauses, and even though some of them were blended with economic equilibrium clauses, um, the freezing stabilization clauses um, almost always is what the international oil companies would hold on to. And so even though you may have changed your laws in the future, to ensure that Ghana gets more revenues, the international oil companies would not agree to that because they will tell you that it will make the economic bargain they negotiated with you uh, be imbalanced. Mm. And to that extent, they won't go for that. But, 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 but. So for me, it's a function of our negotiation from the very beginning. That is why we are not getting much. Rice farmers in the northeast region are calling on the Agric Ministry to urgently come to the aid of colleagues whose rice fields have been invaded by Cruella birds. Hundreds of farmers in the Nsia production enclave have reported the invasion and destruction of their rice farms by a flock of tiny Amarotri birds. Already an estimated 2,000 hectares of rice fields belonging to art growers and smallholder farmers are said to have been destroyed by the rampaging birds. Ilya Sutanku has more in the following report. Rice farmers in the Nasia enclave in the Mamprusi West municipality of the northeast region are counting huge losses following the attack on their rice farms by a flock of bears called the Quilia bears. These migratory bears come seasonally, especially when the rice starts producing seeds as they usually suck the liquid content of the seed as well as eat the grain before it fully matures. Across vast schemes and several farms in the area, farmers are struggling to fight off these destructive pests that are said to have already destroyed an estimated 2,000 hectares of rice fields. Some of the methods deployed by these farmers in the fight against the destruction of their farms include the erection of scarecrows and the deployment of bears chasers to chase the bears away. However, these methods appear to have proven severely ineffective to stop the seasonal invasion of the bears. According to the farmers who claim most of them have refused to go into rice cultivation this year 
as they could not recover from the losses they suffered last year to the bad minis. The farmers are now asking for the intervention of the agri ministry. Mohammed Habib Abdullahi is the head of extension at the Tamana Rice Processing Company at Nasia, a company in addition to supporting outgrower farmers, also cultivates over 1,000 hectares of rice fields annually for its operations. He said the bears have destroyed about 67 hectares already. We have realized that the bears have uh, consumed a chunk of that is almost uh, at least one tenth of the farm, which is highly significant. Uh, year in, year out, we shouldn't be making this massive loss as a company because okay. we are contributing much to food security issues. And for that matter, uh, the need, there's a need for massive support from government to counter this major challenge that we are facing. The Tamana Company Limited, located in the West Mampresi municipality, began operations in 2015 and works with about 4,000 art growers, of which 40% of them are women. The company started operations with just a 40-ton rice mill, but has now been able to establish a 250 tons mill, bringing its production capacity to nearly 300 tons per day. It is the only rice processing company in the Northeast region and has also been the only company to supply rice to all second cycle schools in the five regions of the north. The chief executive officer of the company, al Haji Seydou Braima, said the annual invasion of the bears was a threat to the operation of the company, as well as food security in the country. I think last year, northeast alone, over 35% of farmers lost their rice to uh, the best. And this year, majority of them haven't farmed just because they have already lost their rice to the farms who they feel it bad or they feel it that if they farm again, this is the issue that will come. And most of the art growers that we normally buy from also lost their rice to uh, the best. I think we have a, a, a commercial farmer based in Janga. He did 500 acres last year. He did well. He did even harvest one back. Wow. Due to this, the land is there. He has not even done even an acre. So we are also appealing to the government and those who matters. They have to come to the aid of the farmers, including ourselves. And this is a, mat is a, is a threat to the food security in Ghana. The CEO said a report about the situation was sent to the office of the Agric Ministry, but that they were yet to respond. He also bemoaned the lack of government attention to the plight of rice farmers and producers in the country. And let me even tell you, the government said before even a distributor qualified to import rice into the country, the person has to uh, buy local rice 60% and we, they will give them clearance to come. And nobody in the country that is b uh, following it. They are buying, uh, importing over 100, uh, they are importing 100% of the uh, rice into the country. Nobody is buying from the, from us. If the government has supported the, the, the industry by reviving all this irrigation system, I'm sure by now there wouldn't have been job uh, issues in the country. There wouldn't have been uh, depreciation of our CD. From Nasia, Ilias Sutanko reporting for Joy News. The biggest kids cooking reality TV show on Joy Prime, Big Chef, saw its second eviction week. Now, contestants were challenged to prepare any dish using Indomie. Some created amazing recipes with good taste, while Afia and Alice failed to impress the judges. Here's what you missed. Last Sunday, saw another eviction on The Big Chef Show. Contestants were taxed to make a meal using endomie as their main ingredient. Two. One. Surprises never end in the Big Chef kitchen as judges were marveled at the outcome. Endomie nugget and some toasted pineapple. It tastes good. Surprisingly, it tastes good. Endomie surprise. And then one can be better than one. Oh, Nabo. She's giving you options. So if this concussion doesn't work, you can take your rice home and cook your own stew. And it's, it's, it, I like it. I like it. The season. 
Is it okay? If you had tasted it, you would have corrected it. At the end of the competition, Amma came top as best chef of the day. And there came the sad ending as Alice and the fierce journey ended. If you are, I'm sorry, your journey has ended. Come here. All right. Alice, you're going home. Thank you. Well, the journey to finding Ghana's biggest kitty chef continues. Brought to you by Frito Sunflower Oil, Fortune Rice, Indomie, Top Choco, Flora Tissue, Low Price Masters, Peck Biscuits, City Black Tonic, Sankofa Natural Spices and Karin Mouth Wash. Upper West Regional Minister Dr. Hafiz Ben Saleh is worried that sanitation remains a big challenge for the country, which requires concerted efforts to find practical solutions. He says over the past three decades, the country's water and sanitation sectors have seen major reforms. As a result, now the country achieved 89% access to safe drinking water. However, that of sanitation has not exceeded 15%. For several years, Dr. Bin Sali made the statement at a forum organized by World Vision on the district level water sanitation and hygiene financing project. Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam reports from Jirapa. The district level water sanitation and hygiene financing project is a five-year funded USAID project awarded to global communities with World Vision as one of its sub-grantees. The purpose of the activity is to increase access to sustainable water, sanitation and hygiene services in selected districts located in six regions in the northern Gulf of the country. The project adopts a system strengthening approach in collaboration with the government of Ghana to enhance governance and planning for wash service delivery, strengthen sustainable wash financing, improve private sector engagement and accelerate the adoption of convenient and safe wash behavior development. Upper West Regional Minister Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali commended development partners including non-governmental organizations for their contributions in the water and sanitation sectors geared towards supporting government in bringing development to the people. The region is not doing badly in water delivery. Although there is more room for improvement, we have a total of above 75.9% water coverage in the region. Suppose all ongoing projects are completed and brought on board. In that case, our water coverage will go beyond the stated percentage. History shows that since the early 1990s, Ghana's water and sanitation sector has seen major reforms to address its weaknesses. While the country enjoys a marked success in achieving 89% access to safe water, the same cannot be said for sanitation. Ghana's improved sanitation coverage has not exceeded 15% for a long time. Sanitation in the Upper West region is estimated to be about 10 percent. Dr. Binsale stated that despite the persistent promotion of sanitation and hygiene promotion activities in communities in the region over the last decade, 30 percent of communities still practice open defecation, urging municipal and district assemblies to gazette their sanitation bylaws to make them enforceable to address sanitation challenge. We still have as many as 352 communities practicing open defecation in the region. I wish to use this opportunity again to appeal to our various municipal and district assemblies to step up their game by gazetting their sanitation bylaws to make them enforceable to address the regional sanitation issue. World Vision's WASH program manager, Robert Wamisho, delivering a speech on behalf of World Vision's national director, the King's Tunde stated that water sanitation and hygiene are key determinants of economic growth and well-being. That means this is a collaborative act. World Vision, global communities and other partners coming to work with you. The most important thing to harness 
success out of this project is commitment from the side of government. The Nadoli Kalio district joined the Nandom municipality as a second district in the Upper West region to be declared open defecation free. The Nadoli Kalio DCE, Kate Lankono, shared her thoughts. Community A sees that Community B is doing well. They are having their own latrines. There's a, an effort by Community A to also have their own latrines. Because they make them understand the essence of having your own latrine and also the environmental impact. And also because we do gardening around. So these are all issues that the communities themselves identify as issues that could be um, a disadvantage to their own health. And so it is, uh, becomes a very insightful and uh, experience for them to keep uh, wanting to have their own latrines. And it goes from community to community, community to community, and before we realize the whole district is um, open defecation free. Rafik Salam's reports. You're still watching Joy News today with me, my Peter CBD. We're going to take a break for business. Hello, good afternoon. It's time to do business here on Joy News today with me, Beverly Broom. The Energy Commission says it will continue to push for the certification of artisans in electrical wiring as it will help reduce the incidence of fire outbreaks. It says its annual licensure examination is organized to ensure the safety of life and property in the use of electricity. Meanwhile, 281 artisans in the Ashanti region have passed out as certified electricians after undertaking their licensure examination. Here's more. For nearly a decade, the Energy Commission has ensured the full implementation of the Electrical Wiring Regulations, LI2008, by producing certified electricians. The Commission has certified over 13,000 electricians after the enrollment of the training in 2013. Senior Officer Electrical Wiring at the Energy Commission, Fred E.J. Broby, says the certification aims at alleviating the rampant fires stemming from poor wiring of structures by non-professionals. The challenges that the, the law sought to, to eradicate or to reduce was the risk of fire outbreaks. And if you would remember, some years ago, you would hear fire outbreaks in markets, in buildings, and people were losing their lives and property. And hence, the government at the time thought it wise to put together a law that will regulate this particular industry, just so that anybody who would want to engage in electrical wiring would be certified and duly registered under the Energy Commission before they can engage electrical wiring. When they come out successful, they are given some documentation which we call the ICCs, that is the Installation Completion Certificates. The training was in collaboration with the Ghana National Fire Service and the Ghana Police Service. The professionals went through domestic, commercial, industrial and inspectors training. Clement Anyam could not hide his joy after clinching the best certified electrical wiring professional inspector title. So, inspector journey was not easy because this is my third time it was not easy. And it's going to help me in so many ways. Now it has opened my mind that every ten the CWP I have to inspect their work from day one when we get the contract we have to call the inspector to come and inspect the work. For Joy News, Emmanuel Wright Squeko reporting. And President of Customer Experience Professionals Ghana, Esther Dokua of Fusuhene, is calling on corporate firms to invest more in customer experience. Speaking at the CX Ghana 2022 conference to mark Customer Service Week, she highlighted the need for a deepened relationship between firms and their customers. Customer experience is a customer's holistic perception of their experience with a business or a brand. CS is the result of every interaction a customer has with a business from navigating the website to talking to customer service and receiving the products they bought from a firm. Dokua Ofusuhene admitted that Ghana has done well but would have to sustain the approach. So I think um, we've, we do good across, uh, across the industries. We are focused on the customer and that focus keeps increasing with time. 
this year we can see how many companies and organizations are celebrating the customer service week, which means that now we have got into the understanding of the importance of the customer. What we need to work on is how we deliver an intentional experience. Like you saw from the presentation from the CXPA, we need to design a strategy, we need to align it across the organizations. One of the challenges we are having in Ghana is the siloed working. So if you enter an organization, every department is working on its own and they don't really focus on the end customer or even the internal customer. That is one thing we need to look at. And also, just like the, from the presentation, we need to have a CEX representation in the C-suite. So at the executive level, we should have someone, the chief customer officer, the chief experience officer, driving CX and bringing the customer focus to every business decision. Patron at the event, Margaret Tichimaika on her part, called for stronger institutions to engage customers more often. I think that to start with, we need commitment. And uh, commitment is not just from the executive level, but throughout the organization. If you listen to the insights that we're given, most organizations do have a strategy. They do have a, a people looking after customer service. But customer service is everybody's business. But we tend to limit it to people who wear a hat called customer experience, customer service, and that limitation doesn't help. It is also across all channels. We call it the Omni channel. Every channel must provide that experience. Customer experience measures how customers feel about a company overall and includes the emotional, physical, and psychological connection. On that note, we end business here on Journeys today with me, Beverly Broom. For more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com for a slash business. Up next is sports. Time now to bring you some sports. And Hazaka's ladies head coach, Yusi Bazigi, anticipates that this year's Women's Premier League will be tougher than the previous ones. Speaking to Joy Sports after his size 1 0 win over Berry Ladies on March Day 1, Baziki said his girls must up their game if they want to win the league. This season is not going to be an easy task. But as and when the league is progressing, we'll be able to make amends. Like you rightly said, um, it's a transitional period for us because we have quite a number of players that um, we have brought on board, about 11 new players. But we are blending well, and the moment they start gelling, it will be extremely difficult for any team to stop Azakis ladies. And we are going to make sure that we hold on to every team from now until the time we are good to go. So I think that um, we can see the likes of uh, Faith ladies, Army ladies, and uh, others doing very well. But it's early this year, like you said. So um, until maybe we get to the third and fourth game before we'll be able to uh, testify where the direction is going. Uh, still on the Women's Premier League, a newly promoted side, Rich City, they suffered a 3-0 loss to Socrates and their coach, Luis Ampofo, blamed it on too much respect for the opponents. Very, in terms of um, results, very, very bad. Uh, I think uh, in the first half, we were not playing to our strength. We afforded them too much space to wreak havoc. Uh, we had an idea of how they set up from our experience with them at the Middle League. And so our preparation and everything was based on what we knew of them. But then we realized in the first half that uh, they had changed. Uh, I think they started with a 3-4-3 in the first half, which was causing us some issues. And so we had to react. But unfortunately, uh, it did, the reaction did not happen as quickly as we wanted. And we had already considered three goals. So if you realize in the second half, we did much better because now we had to match them player by player on the field. We also had to switch to a three-back system where we now had a 1v1 almost everywhere on the field. And that was quite better. But unfortunately, the harm had already been done. I know in the latter part, we had some chances that we miscued. And yeah, it's just a bad experience. But then I believe that this is something that we can build on. And we are going to do better in our next game. That'll be all the sports for now. My name is Fentu Tahir Fentu. Time for showbiz and let's go to myjoyonline.com and see some entertainment stories that are trending. All right, we all have Don Little's warning about Na Agrada's money doubling scheme goes viral after arrests. We also have Akufado paying tribute to legendary high life musician Nana Ampedu. 
We have Sadiq, Abdullah Abu, uh, Mr. Simon, Spikey, others confirmed. Would we like to see what they have been confirmed as? Because we know that Spikey uh, is one of our own. So we want to see what they have been confirmed as. Okay, so uh, we can go to myjournal.com to see that story. We also have uh, Angelina Jolie accuses Brad Pitt of abuse on private plane. We have Echo Blank Blankson's last video goes viral on social media. More stories, uh, music section. Kiddy apologizes to fans in UCC after walking off stage. We know that he went to go perform at UCC, but they had some technical challenges, some sound challenges, which led Kiddy to walk off the stage. And now he's apologizing um, after walking off. We have my mother's love for the late Nanayam Pedu, propelled my music career that is from Akosia. Uh, Japan, and she was speaking to Becky on E Vibes. All right, uh, Sadiq Abdullah Abu, uh, Mr. Simon Spikey, others confirmed as speakers for 2022 Ghana DJ Clinic. We know that the Ghana DJ Clinic is um, hosted or it is organized by our very own DJ Mercury. So make sure that you join those uh, people. And the theme on this. Uh, this for this year is reimagining your career and the D Ghana DJ Clinic 2022 is on Saturday October 15th at the Accra Tourist Information Center it starts at 9 a.m. so if you want to hear from uh, Sadiq if you want to hear from Camilo's manager from Spikey who's a great producer you can uh, join them on Saturday October 15th at the Accra Tourist Information Center center and that's how we wrap up and end the show for more news you can continue on my joyonline.com i am mabisa cbd thank you so much for your company enjoy the rest of your day